నమస్కారం డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ సార్వత్రిక విశ్వవిద్యాలయం విద్యార్థులకు స్వాగతం India has a long coastline embraced by Arabian Sea in the west and Bay of Bengal in the east and is strategically located to harvest rich fishery resources in the Indian Ocean. In aqua industry, prawns have been playing a prominent role due to its economic importance. The main source of prawns in India is the sea, but nowadays the farmers are also cultivating them which become another source. Prawns, after being fished and brought to the shore, are subjected to spoilage if proper protective measures are not taken. There are mainly two types of spoilage. One is the chemical spoilage, where tissue contents of the body, like free amino acids, are leached out, resulting in loss of taste and nutritive value. When leaching takes place, loss of fate occurs. Another type of spoilage is bacterial contamination. Free fatty acids are released from fish muscles by enzymatic hydrolysis of triglycerides and phospholipids, thereby affecting the quality of fish. The spoilage can start in the boat itself, where prawns are stored for 6 hours or more without ice. Later, in the course of process like peeling, use of contaminated utensils and bad quality water, spoilage can be enhanced. Prawns deteriorate faster than fishes. Up to 4 hours at 28 degrees centigrade, prawns keep up their original quality but after that, deterioration is rapid and in 6 to 8 hours, they can become unfit for eating. To prevent spoilage, the material should be kept in ice, which preserves the good quality of the prawns. Prawns should be beheaded and stored well iced immediately after taking out of water till they are processed for packing and transport. The quality of prawns, once deteriorated, is irredeemable even by subsequent improved application of ice. The storage time during which the prawns remain in good condition is known as shelf life. The quantity of ice to be used is in the proportion of 1 is to 1 ice to prawn by weight. Ice controls the temperature and slows down the action of enzymes. If crushed ice is used, the fine pieces may prick the muscles of the prawns and cause wounds. During transport in trucks, the shaking and churning action in containers can cause injury. Flake ice is softer and will not injure the tissues. Ice can get contaminated by bacteria if it is prepared from low quality water or if it is in contact with unclean surfaces of boat decks, dirty floors and tables. Therefore, ice must be prepared from protected water, specially chlorinated for the purpose. 
the rise in spoilage indices in iced prawns is much more lower than in prawns held without ice. This is due to loss of spoilage compounds in iced prawns through leaching when ice melts and flows. Peeled prawns keep better than whole prawns. In storage, prawns begin to blacken in a few days. This blackening or melanosis in prawns is only an enzymatic process which does not involve any bacterial action. The bigger prawns appears to be more susceptible to discoloration. Removing the cephalothorax before preserving in ice minimizes melanosis. Although blackening is a phenomena having no effect on chemical changes, but it is commercially disadvantageous. The minimum requirement for the sanitation for a fish processing plant which can prevent many defects in the finished products are as follows. Fishing boards. The construction of boards should be such that cleaning of holes, shelves, etc. and disinfection can be done easily. Smooth, hard, water impervious and non-corrosive materials free from cracks and crevices should be used. Immediately after each hall is stored, deck may be cleared and disinfected. Wooden holes, bins, pens and shelves must be dried and painted at least once a year. Paints should not contain any toxic ingredient. Utensils and surfaces of boards where fishes are placed must be clean and scrubbed with suitable detergents like tea pol or disinfected by using chlorine 100 ppm that is parts per million for utensils and even 1000 ppm for wooded surfaces. Now ice for protection. Boards can carry ice prepared from portable water. Unloading. During unloading the fish or shrimp should not be exposed to adverse elements of nature. After de-icing the fish for weighing, they should be re-iced and chilled below 2 degrees centigrade within 1 hour of unloading. All places which had contact with the fish should be cleaned and disinfected. Transport Prawns can be transported at all times. The containers should not be overfilled to avoid damage by pressing when one is placed over the other. Vehicles and containers should be made fit for easy cleaning. Insulated containers and vehicles equipped with refrigeration equipment be pre-cooled to an air temperature of 5 degrees centigrade below before loading starts. Prawn seed is the most important component for prawn culture. The seed can be obtained from three sources, riverine, hatcheries and buns. In India, Penis indicus and Penis monodon are commonly cultured in laboratories and hatcheries. The spawners are collected from the sea and are transported to the hatcheries for rearing. Mature females have well developed ovaries that can be seen through the dorsal cuticle if the animal is held against a bright source of light. Most females are impregnated and contain white spermatophores. These animals are kept in sea water and quickly transported to the laboratory or hatching area. The prawns are released in plastic tanks containing clean sea water. Reproduction and spawning in prawns is controlled by gonad inhibiting hormone produced by the neurosecretory centers. Removal of one eye stalk in female induce the prawns to mature in captivity. Only one female is kept in one tank of 250 liters capacity. During spawning, the male prawn is not present near the female because the spermatophores are also discharged simultaneously with spawning and fertilization takes place. The ova hatch giving rise to nauplius, which undergoes molting and passes through protozoa, mysis and post larval stages. Finally, giving rise to juveline phase. The juvelines are transported to shrimp ponds 
where rearing is carried out. Now let us talk to Sri Vishnu Vardhan Rao, who is a farmer cultivating shrimps at Yanam about the management of the ponds. Madam, we, we have started this uh, shrimp culture uh, activity in the year 1994, uh, when the industry was just uh, picking up. Uh, practically that shrimp industry was not there much before in 1994. The location of, uh, the, location of the ponds uh, uh, we have an advantage because of its isolation. So, there is, uh, practically there will not be any cross contamination. So, we thought this place is ideal for to carry on a good and model form to carry on the P monodon activity. So, after selection of this place, uh, we have been taking a lot of assistance from the fisheries department Kakinada and our fisheries department Yanam for a good uh, culture management techniques. So, we are not also having not much exposure to this uh, activity. So, we have been taking their assistance. So, we are also uh, putting uh, everything into practical uh, operation uh, right from starting of a good pond management uh, and uh, good water sourcing. You know, we have got uh, three water sourcing uh, sources that is uh, fresh water from the canal that is irrigation water with zero salinity and we have an underground uh, uh, tapping through bores which is having 30 salinity with no iron. Hardness is around 5000 uh, range which, uh, which means 50% uh, of the bores can be used for the culture activity and we have got a creek, big creek that uh, Godavari river. Uh, the salinity variation will be ranging from 0 to 30 depending upon the season. So, these are the uh, three different sources of water for our culture operation. Yeah, but what is the ideal salinity for this? Uh, you know, with various uh, experiments across the coast position, the success rate is more for the P monodon between 15 to uh, say 15 plus or minus uh, 5 salinity range is considered to be more uh, successful. Profitable. So, those, such of those forms which has got a mix of water where they can adjust the salinities, yeah. there the success rate is more. I see. So, this is also our observation. Mm -hmm. That means if the salinity is less, uh, are they prone to get some diseases or? Uh, it is only it a minus mark. See, for example, uh, the hatchery processing is done usually at sea salinity that is around 25 ppt. Mm -hmm. And uh, in some areas, uh, the salinity of the culture ponds go as high as 45. So, there we have seen that the growth is not as expected, the retardation in the growth. So, that is how we conclude that higher salinities will lead to growth problems. And it so naturally that growth is less means the prawn is under stress, which leads to virus break. Okay. How many cultures generally you will have in a year? Uh, yearly we are taking two cultures ma'am. Yeah. Uh, usually this first culture uh, from uh, starting from February. Uh, there it is 100 percent assured uh, because of our isolation of the pond, because the temperature of the um, culture system is maintained. The temperature required for the culture operation is between 28 degrees to 35 degrees. The, during this first crop season, the more uh, the problems will be less because of the temperature stability and uh, not much variation in the uh, atmospheric changes because the temperature will be steady increasing from February to May. Mm -hmm. So, we will be harvesting this first crop sometime uh, at the end of July and one month we leave in between and uh, we prepare the tongs again by giving some uh, uh, treatment and to ensure that it is free from bacteria or any sediments and again we will start the second culture in the month of September. Yeah, what treatment is generally given? Uh, for the summer crop, for example, uh, the harvest completes by January then the tanks uh, will have a uh, sun drying, so which itself is a good uh, treatment and then plowing the soil, uh, enriching with some minerals like uh, mineral mixture and all these things. And we will also send the soil for pH verification 
the pH required is around 7 for the soil this thing and for the culture management for the water it is required anything between 8 to 8.5 is the ideal uh, pH condition for the water. So, these are the preparation of the tanks we ensure and once the tanks are uh, made to the specification we pump the water, we pump the water to the salinity of 15 and something like that and we allow the water to retain like that and see that some bloom is maintained, yeah. the bloom means algae situation is maintained and uh, we bring the stability of the algae because if there is any drop uh, influence of atmosphere will sometimes will crash the algae. So, we also we, we for a preparation of the algae inside the tanks also we do some manuring that is urea and super phosphate and all this mix we give it. Yeah. So, the algae, algae will come and it will have a stable position then we, we, we bring the seed that seed is also tested by PCR we ensure that the PCR negative samples are only brought and then we put the required uh, number into the uh, tanks. Mm -hmm. Earlier we were doing only something like uh, 2 per square meter, now with the expertise and the confidence that we have developed because of the success of the farming, now we started putting 6 uh, per square meter. So, obviously when you in keep on increasing the density of the population in the tanks, it is likely that you should also be adopting the process, scientific management of process to arrest the diseases. If you keep on increasing the density and if you do not follow the scientific management, obviously somewhere uh, in the crop situation it will uh, virus break will be there and you lose the crop. And one interesting thing in this uh, process of this uh, aquaculture is your commercial viability takes place only after 90 days. The, in the present situation per kg we are getting only 270 rupees. The cost of production itself is coming around uh, 150 to 200 rupees. Uh, uh, for the farmer, for making a profit of 70 rupees uh, in the uh, shrimp culture uh, is not considered to be a really good return. Why? Because the success rate is only once in 3 years for the farmer. So, naturally uh, uh, when you go for higher productivity, uh, it, uh, you are also carrying a lot of risk with you. So, unless you follow a scientific management where you have should have a good power management, you should have good water system management, you should have good feeding management, you should have a, a timely harvest. So, these are the things we should parallelly up, uh, update ourselves to cope up with the requirement of the shrimp inside the pond. What about the feed of the shrimps? Yeah, feed actually, the feed already there are uh, in, the, in the starting of the culture day, there are uh, ready made feeds. Uh, uh, we used to bring that uh, meat, uh, mix some uh, maize and all these things, cooked maize and all these things. Yeah. Now with the uh, development of the industry, a uh, good uh, feed mills also have come up in the country. Uh, they are ready to eat foods. Yeah. So they are good in number now. So all the uh, uh, all those ready-made feeds we are buying from the market yeah. and giving it to the stream. Yeah. How many times generally the feed is given? Uh, that depending upon the size of the animal. Suppose immediately after feeding, giving the seed into the tanks, yeah. uh, daily once we give that feed, uh, uh, it is in the, um, that is called the starter feeds. Yes. Starter feeds, the, anything that you give, we have a calculation with the biomass inside. Mm -hmm. So, with the, in the initial stage, it may be 10 percent of the biomass. So, for example, suppose you put 1 lakh of seed in that. So, each piece will be after week, uh, it will be about 1 gram. 1 gram means uh, 1000 pieces, if it, uh, 1 lakh means maybe about 10 kgs. 10 kgs means 10 percent means 1 kg feed you give it to the pond. So, like that when it comes to say for example 90 days, we expect that the pond will grow to an extent of 25 grams to 30 grams range. In that range we have got a feed percentage of uh, 2.5 percent uh, on the biomass. For example, you have a 1 ton material inside, so we give 20 kgs, uh, uh, 20 to 25 kgs of the feed to the pond that we split into four times because it will take more feed in the night time. Mm -hmm. So, we give 35 percent of the feed requirement in the night and uh, say 25 percent in the morning at uh, after sunrise. Mm -hmm. After sunrise means we expect that the temperature of the water comes to the mm -hmm. somewhere near 28. In case the feed is given more are there any problems? Now, we kept for four check trays in the pond uh, for the time to time checking of the intake of the feed by the animal. All our manpower is also trained in a systematic manner. Immediately after giving the feed, they also put some percentage in the check trays. If there is any left out feed in the check trays, 
we conclude that uh, it is not fully taking. Sometimes on the Ashtami and Naomi days or full moon day or on the Amavasya days, the only 80 percent of the feed will be consumed, 25, 20 percent will not be consumed. So accordingly, we reduce the input of the feed also. So we reduce because we know the days yes. where it takes, molting will take place, so it will not take full meal. So, the shrimps thus collected directly from the sea and from the ponds will be sent to the processing units. The initial processing should be done in a building near the waterfront with smooth, cemented and sloping floors so that water runs to the drain. The place where material is received must be separate from the place where grading and packing is done to avoid cross-contamination. Sufficient ventilation is necessary in the rooms. If necessary, exhaust fans may be installed. Light must be sufficient. Doors must be self-closing to prevent flies. Portable water must be in plenty and also chlorinated at a level of 10 ppm and only this water should be used for processing. Normally, 1 kilogram of raw material requires an absolute minimum of 10 liters of water. Ice should be prepared from chlorinated water, 10 ppm and used carefully to avoid contamination. Peeling and deveining and other processes should be done on tables with their tops of stainless steel, aluminium or other non-corroding, non-reacting material. Enameled wire mesh utensils ought to be discarded. Utensils used for keeping waste should be so marked that they are not used for keeping edible matter. Before starting and finishing the work, all utensils and equipment must be washed clean of slime by using neutral detergents followed by disinfection using sodium hypochlorate of 100 ppm strength for 15 minutes contact before final washing. The personal hygiene. The person working in the factory must maintain a high standard of cleanliness. They must wear clean overall and head covering while on duty. Hands from elbow down must be washed with soap followed by disinfectants using chlorine 200 ppm strength. Washing and disinfecting of legs can also be done before entering the room. For leg washing, disinfectant baths may be made at the entrance door. Too much talking, sneezing, spitting and using tobacco should be avoided. Eating must be in a separate room, away from the work site and any deviation from this discouraged. The management should arrange quarterly medical examination of personnel and should not allow those with the communicable diseases, hand injuries, etc. to enter the processing halls. The waste materials should be disposed of frequently and kept in bins placed for the purpose far away from the working place. There must be adequate drainage facilities for carrying away water used in the factory premises and to discharge through drains at least 100 feet away from the unit. The main aim of preservation is to have a control over the factors which cause fish or prawn spoilage. The attempt is made to put the spoilage to minimum if not to stop completely. The principles of preservation include Cleaning, lowering of temperature, rising of temperature, dehydration, use of salt, chemical preservation, exposure to low radiation of gamma rays. The methods of preservation include chilling with ice or mixture of ice and salt, freezing and refrigeration, storing in cold storage, deep freezing and freeze drying, canning, sun drying, mechanical drying, dry salting, brining, smoking and pickling. 
First of all, the catch will be sorted, that is, separation of required species is done, and then different varieties of prawns are separated. This process is called sorting of catch. Ice packing. In this method of preservation, after deheading of the shrimps, they will be kept in cane baskets and thoroughly washed. Then, they will be treated with sodium bisulfate and chlorine solution and will be taken inside the fish hole. In fish hole, one of the compartments will be made ready for packing. The crushed ice will be spread evenly with a thickness of not less than 6 inches height and on that, treated shrimp will be spread. Above that, another layer of crushed ice will be kept, over which treated shrimp will be spread and so on. This process is called ice packing. Filled and treated slab molds will be kept in the stand and will be placed in plate freezer. The temperature maintained in plate freezer will be minus 25 degrees centigrade to minus 30 degrees centigrade. After 3 hours, that is, depending upon the capacity of the plate freezer, the slabs will be taken out and will be kept in polythene cover and card box and will be packed and stored in fish hole where the constant temperature between minus 20 degrees to minus 30 degrees will be maintained. After the card box packing, each box will be called as carton. On the carton, brand name, processor name and license number will be written and the total weight of the carton also will be written. Then, the frozen shrimp will be sent to the shipment for export. This program is the first time you have to do this program. I am the director of the audio visual production and research center, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar Open University, Prof. G. Ramesh Reddy, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar Open University, Prof. G. Ramesh Reddy, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar Open University, फाइव जीरो 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 थ्री थ्री Thank you.